The Chemist Shop Trip A Belladonna Trip Report by Angelica Uploaded to Earwood.org on April 19th, 2008 I was 15 years old when I tried Belladonna for the first time, and last until now, although when I did it, I was not exactly sure of what I was doing. I was in my mother's chemist shop, where I was working for the summer. It was at 2.30 in the afternoon when she went to have a lunch break and left me alone at the chemist shop. I knew she'd return at 5.30 approximately. Generally, my mother trusted me, and of course, didn't know that every time she left I would spend my time experimenting with explosive substances, e.g. natrium in water in the backyard, and I'd gladly watch which would make the biggest bang. I'd also try out essential oils and perfumes on my skin, and once had found an eat in a lexitanil codeine pill. So there I was, once again, opening strange bottles of various substances and experimenting their use. All of it seemed extremely amazing to my teenage eyes. Suddenly, in a backpack shelf I had never noticed before, I found three bottles. One of it was labelled Belladonna Tincture, another Ibogaine, and the last one, Neroli Essential Oil. Not having a clue about what might be the first two, I judged, brightly, from the third, that there must be some sort of perfume. Some information about Belladonna had also dropped to my attention, e.g. that the witches would use it for some sort of flying, and that the Roman ladies would put it in their eyes to make them shine. So I opened the bottle, which was never opened before, and smelled it a bit. The smell was beautiful, intoxicating and rich. I decided there was nothing wrong with applying some tincture on my skin, so I did. I applied a lot on my arms and neck. It was about 3 o'clock then. At about half an hour later, I started feeling tired and dizzy, although as I hadn't slept at all the previous night, I accused that for my condition. In that state of mind, I wondered how would belladonna taste. I thought everything was okay as long as I did not apply belladonna in my eyes. Boy, was I smart. So, I put some on my hand and licked it from it. It had the strong taste of alcohol every tincture has, plus a bad, really bad taste. I drank some water to make the taste go away. A bit later on, I felt cold. It was around 30 degrees outside, but I thought at the time being cold was normal. So I put on my jacket and went to the couch to get some sleep. From that point and then, I totally lost count of the sense of time. To my mind, one second later, I decided I wasn't feeling sleepy at all and woke up. I was absolutely certain, certain that I had woken up and walked around the room. The room was filled with strange colours that, even now, I have problems describing them exactly. For some reason, I saw absolutely no problem with it. I continued walking towards the front room of the chemist shop, where the sales are made from, until now I was in the back room, where we keep the medicine in stock. This was when I suddenly realised that the ceiling was coming towards me. I took a better look and understood that my feet weren't on the ground and that it was me that was flying towards the ceiling. I was extremely scared, thinking I would bang my head on it. Carefully, I walked into the front room and to my biggest surprise of all, I saw my mother in work, having returned from the lunch break, selling medicine to some blurry entities. I couldn't make out what they were. I was shocked as I was afraid of what on earth she was supposed to think seeing me flying above her head. Of course, she did not see me, I took a look at the front clock and saw the hour. It was half past seven in the afternoon. Being sure that from lying on the couch till the time being, only two or three minutes could have passed, I actually came to the realisation of the fact that there was something terribly wrong with me. Having not had such previous hallucinogenic experiences, I could understand nothing of my condition. I was certain everything was real, that I was not dreaming or dead. From the point I saw the hour, and then I remember the shock, such as a shock from a fall, to returning into my physical body, feeling nothing but thirsty. I opened the tab and drank lots and lots of water. My skin was itching. I took off my jacket and my arms and my neck was all red, maybe also from the alcohol or other substances in the tincture that irritate the skin. I know not if I can plainly accuse Belladonna of that though. 
I washed off the smell with tons of water. To my surprise, when I saw my watch, the hour was indeed a bit past of half past seven. I felt petrified knowing that my mother would be here already, and I was curious as to why she did not know anything of my condition. Later on, she indeed came in and told me that she saw me sleeping before and did not want to wake me up. Quickly, I hid the three bottles, and when she saw the water all over me and the red arms and neck, I made up an excuse of having accidentally touched a plant in the garden, one that is very similar with one I am allergic to. She felt pity for me and sent me home with my dad and some antihistamine medicine. The three days that followed, I cannot remember a lot besides that I was unwell, but manageably, and that my vision was a blur. I stayed in bed with the allergy excuse. After about a week or so, I was okay, suffering from no side effects and having tons of question marks inside my head as up to what it was all about. I was fascinated by the reality I had witnessed and eager to do it again sometime, until I made some research for the plant on the internet and found out how toxic it really is, and how lucky I was I only had the symptoms above. I also was extremely lucky that my parents did not understand and that no one had any helpful ideas about taking me to the hospital. Some months later, I also asked my mother, telling her I randomly discovered Belladonna and Ibogaine at the shop, and asked her what they were. She told me that when she opened the pharmacy, it was obligatory for all the pharmacists to have them, and she was uncertain concerning their use. For Belladonna, she stated it was a kind of antidote to mushroom poisoning, and for Ibogaine, it was some kind of medicine for tropical diseases. Well, this was my experience. I certainly learned a lot from it, and if I could go back in time, I wouldn't change having had it at all. But, I was much more responsible in the future of any substances I experimented with. I'd be afraid to repeat the experience, after all I know of Belladonna now. I was lucky once, but I'll not be always. As of my mother, I know not anything of her relationship with the substances. I truly, truly tried to find out about it for a lot of years and from a lot of sources, but I didn't come to any safe conclusion. Then, after I had asked, check for the bottles in the back shelf, they were, of course, gone. Along with the Neroli essential oil, if of course this was actually the content of the bottle. It seems that mothers do indeed protect their secrets.